Hello, I'm LR, and thank you for joining me for Reactor Reactions. And this week we're going to basically concentrate on the San Diego Comic Con trailers that were released. And I must say, uh, I've been watching Comic Con, you know, San Diego Comic Con for a long time, following the aftermath of trailers released for the last at least three or four years. This had to be the best. I mean, um, it was so much excitement of these trailers being released uh, that we're going to discuss here. And it was just a, I mean, just it just seems like every year it gets better and better. And I was just took me a day to record this because I had to wait to calm down after you know seeing those trailers and panels at Comic Con. But let's go over our top four reaction trailers. And uh, definitely you want to comment below at the uh, comment section, or you can email me at g ready to react now at gmail dot com, or hit me up on Twitter or Facebook. Either one of those. Send me your comments, your thoughts. On uh, in your reactions on uh, the trailers that what you thought about the trailers that was at San Diego Comic Con and the implications of these trailers and what they mean for the future of uh, the C DCEU, Netflix series, MCU, and even TV itself. So, first reaction the Justice League trailer. Well, we definitely saw what I believe is the precursor of a fantastic movie in a couple of months that we're going to see. I thought it, the trailer looked fantastic. The imaging, the color, you can see Josh Whedon got in there a little bit and did some editing a little bit. And Jack Snyder, I, I want to give uh, Zack Snyder, that is, a lot of credit. Because basically this is his movie, but Josh Whedon came in, did some reshoots, and we've probably seen some of the reshoots and some of the, the way the scenes flowed. Some of the comedy, and obviously Josh Whedon is a expert of putting together teen movies. He did Avengers One and Avengers Two, Age of Ultron, but Avengers One was fantastic, knowing how to bring a team together, and I think he did that here along with Zack Snyder's uh, vision. Uh, I think that you can see that in this trailer a lot more color, things of that nature. Um, you see the characters interact a little more, um, how they're going to come together. The poster alone was outstanding new poster that remind me of uh, Kingdom Come if you ever read that uh, graphic novel the that kind of artwork really sets it off that poster gets you excited and it really was something I wasn't expecting from DC but so happy they did it and it's definitely you see the course correction although there are some rumors that about Batman that you know they put to bed but then are they put to bed is that the storyline we'll get into that later but um, I thought the trailer was fantastic got a little bit of Stephen Wolf uh, he looks amazing, and, and Stephen Wolf is just a lieutenant of Darkseid. Can you imagine how devastating and powerful Darkseid is going to be when he finally comes? And I think we've seen, you know, Unite the Seven, and there's going to be seven Justice League members. Who that seventh person is, who knows? Is it Shazam? Is it Supergirl? Is it Martian Manhunter? Is it Green Lantern? Who knows? But whoever the seven is, they're going to be united. But I think we're going to have even more vil uh, heroes in the second part of the Justice League movie. I think this is the first part. There's going to be a second part where they actually fight Darkseid. And I think you're going to see something similar to Infinity War in DC. Where they're going to have a bunch of heroes come together to fight Darkseid. So we're going to get a big slate of heroes. And they're already launching those movies out. As you know, Shazam is the next one up. He is going, I believe he's going to be in this movie. I really do. I think Shazam movie being second means that he's going to show up in this movie in a, either a cameo or, or in a full scene at the end. Much like the DC uh, Justice League War animation movie was, he came in at the end and joined the crew. So I think you might see that. Um, one thing about the trailer is that we really got our input of what how Wonder Woman has affected the DC Universe, how she's taking the mantle. Or or even getting up there to where Batman is as far as being the leader and uh, the flag post for the DCEU. Um, you know, the Batman movie will be coming out soon, but until then I think Wonder Woman is going to be leading things off, maybe showing up in other people's movie perhaps as a precursor to get her ready, get these other heroes off the ground until Batman gets more out there, because there's some controversy with Batman. And well, I guess we'll get into that right now. So you, as you know, or may not know, there was a Report, I believe, by the Hollywood Reporter that Batman will Ben Affleck will no longer be Batman. Um, and then on San Diego Comic Con at the panel, he said, "Not so much." But he said, "I love playing a character. I love. I'm so lucky in this set." Didn't say he was staying or going. So remember one thing too: 
these studios, they're not in Ben Affleck. If there is agreement for him to leave, which I still believe he is gone, um, which is unfortunate, they're not going to ruin the momentum by saying, yeah, I'm leaving, I'm looking to get out or to go replace me. That would have killed the whole vibe of the panel, the whole mood of the weekend. So he's going to play the line. And they, you know, quite frankly, they're going to have him play Batman. Uh, probably into the next movie somewhat, but I do expect them to probably switch him out and maybe him play play Batman in flashbacks, play Batman in future movies. But if they're going to do the Batman like in the story of the past of before you know Robin died or before Robin was even there, Ben Affleck is too old to play that Batman, play a younger version. They're not going to use a CG like they did with. Uh, Michael Douglas and Ant-Man to make him look younger or Robert Downey Jr. in uh, Civil War to make him look younger in certain scenes. They're not going to do that for the whole movie. So they're just going to cast a younger Batman. So he may be fading out as far as playing the Batman in every movie or full time because they're going to want to go to younger Batman. And the DC Universe, although uh, Warner Brothers casted Ben Affleck and I think he's the best Batman we've seen, he was too old to play the part if you're going to have a cinematic universe and you want to have be like Marvel where this actor is playing this role for four or five movies. Um, you got to go with a younger actor. Uh, but they, if Ben Affleck is staying, I think it's great. I think he's a great Batman, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's moving on. And, of course, you're never going to hear anything. He's going to dispute it all, and that's we've seen this before. You remember he was directing Batman. I'm definitely directing Batman. He's not directing Batman. So you don't know. So that's neither here there, but I'm glad they, they you know they they didn't want to ruin the mood, so they kept it quiet. And, he, and I think if people are gonna love his performance, and maybe Warner Brothers and him will decide to stay on. Who knows? But uh, I thought he was fantastic uh, in the trailer. He looked great. Cyborg, we saw a little more of what he can do. Not all his powers. Aquaman is he's not your grandpa's Aquaman. This guy is fantastic. This guy is powerful cool making Aquaman cool like he always have been in the past he wasn't so much of that character but now he is definitely a cool character to like and he's very powerful as well and the Flash I love I, you know I don't mind the Flash being comedy relief he's funny uh, I thought he had, he stole it the show in many ways with his lines um, <laughs> and I, obviously he's and you can tell by the trailer He's only been Barry Allen probably for the last five or six months because he's not even sure of all his powers. You know, he said, all I do is push people and run away. He's not even aware of all the things that he can do, and he probably will learn that during some of the movies, learn some new tricks, but we'll see more of that in his movie uh, called Flashpoint. And uh, later on, I'll do a uh, video about the DC slate and what it means. But uh, definitely uh, love what I saw, love the vibe, and the trailer was fantastic. And then, of course... You know uh, what happened at the end. You know who is that at the end? But the Justice League trailer was fantastic. The panel was fantastic, and I think they did it. DC and Warner Brothers did a fantastic job. Okay, so let's react to that. What you thought about the Justice League trailer in my comment section below, or you can email me a or send me a tweet. Now the next trailer, Thor Ragnarok, and uh, we already knew what to expect from the first trailer. We loved that one, but this was one was even more in depth. We saw Loki more, and we saw the Hulk more. And a lot of people are like, oh, the Hulk's talking. Well, the Hulk spoke in Avengers One. You know, he spoke when he took Loki and tossed him back and forth. You know, he said puny guy. So we, it's not the first time we've heard Hulk speak. You know, he even spoke in the Incredible Hulk when he's fighting the Abomination. He said Hulk smash. You know, and. You know, so this is not the first time we spoke. He, he has spoken, but he's the first time he has spoken in a couple of uh, sentences. So I guess it's the longest time he spoke. And I'm glad they have him speaking and everything. Change his look up a little bit, which is consistent with the comic book. I'm glad they did that. You know, sometimes he had a buzz cut. Sometimes he had a fade. Sometimes he had curly hair. Uh, not curly, but this wavy hair down to his neck at least. Different uh, version of the Hulk, depending on how Mark Ruffalo looks. I guess they, they go off of that. Uh, how he loved Bruce Banner looks anyway and his hair how the Hulk will just mimics it but I'm glad they made Hulk talk and everything because that's another step although I don't think we're ever gonna get another standalone Hulk movie for a while I think Universal or Paramount whoever owns them is not gonna maybe they'll come to the table because him talking now I mean I was just watching him talk and everything I'm thinking man how cool would it be to get a Mr. Fix-It Hulk movie coming together where he turns into the Grey Hulk and he's like wise cracking you talking about Deadpool being smart Alec, the, if you ever read The Grey Hulk, that guy, when he was a bouncer in Vegas, was hilarious. 
smart alley and can back it up because he'll kick your butt. And I hope they see that one. I hope to see the Great Hulk, the Red Hulk, I mean, She Hulk. There's so many Hulk stories that Marvel's yet to do and they just can't do it because the distribution rights belong to Universal, I believe, or something uh, belong to Universal. And they just have not made a deal. But Hulk looked fantastic in this movie. Uh, we saw Fire Lord Surter at the end, uh, Hulk going at him. We saw more of Hela, how she looks, how powerful she is. And more and more, watching this trailer, I do not believe an Affinity Stone is in this trailer. I don't. I think it's in Black Panther, more and more. Uh, I just don't know. I mean, she could have it, but if she had it, why, how could she have ever been in prison in the first place? It's not in Thor's hammer. That's more the Odin Force or some other Thunder Force that's in there. So I don't think the Infinity Stone is in the last one. The Soul Gems in Thor Ragnarok. But I love the color. I love Valkyrie. I love how they're getting a team up together. Um, and it, it's great. Yeah, I thought it was a fantastic trailer. Uh, just so happy to see that trailer along with the Justice League trailer that made Comic Con fantastic. Along with a lot of other trailers. But those are our top two. So... Tell me what you thought about the Thor Ragnarok trailer, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you thought they could have done a little better, but I thought they did a fantastic job. Now, some of you that were at Hall H happened to see the Infinity War trailer, or if you the D23. Well, in case you didn't know it, it did leak online. I don't. It's only a matter of time, I think, before Disney uh, or Marvel yanks it off or have YouTube yank it off, but somebody stuck a camera in there. And good thing and bad thing. Good thing is we all got to see Infinity War. We've been thriving thirsting, waiting to see Infinity War. We wanted to see it so bad, and marvelously, Disney wasn't going to release it. Somebody snuck a camera in there, got the footage, and you could see the trailer uh, at an angle, but you get the just of it online. And uh, But because of this, you know, you probably will see Marvel react and say, you know what, no cell phones whatsoever next year. We're going to ban them, we're going to be searched, and they're going to do something about it, because I'm sure they're upset it was leaked. Um, and I understand, they should have the right to release their their intellectual property when they want to release it it shouldn't be bootlegged I'm happy I saw it I'm happy the guy did it because I wanted to see it so bad hearing so much about it but you know it is a violation I guess of trust so you know I understand them being upset and you know but maybe you know Marvel just doesn't release things all the time to make you wait and maybe that's part of their strategy but people are so uh, anxious about these movies this is the biggest superhero team up ever and I think Marvel should have anticipated that people want to see it just release it on your terms but they didn't do it and it got released that being said I mean I didn't watch it in good quality like the Justice League of Thor Ragnarok trailer but this thing is sick I mean if you saw my review last week uh, I think Infinity War will be the biggest opening comic book movie of all time if not the overall top movie of all time I really do uh, I myself will probably see that movie six times in the movie theater you know say the say the least not to mention this winter with Star Wars Justice League and Thor Ragnarok I'm probably gonna spend 250 bucks at the movie theater I'm gonna see each of these movies three or four times no doubt that's how excited I am and and I hope you're excited too because I, I mean I'm just Elated, and I've been reading comic books and watching these things. I mean, I never thought in my wildest dreams I would ever see these heroes in production on this kind of level, on this kind of quality. I never did. And, uh, you know, I, I just am amazed at the trailer. I mean, you saw Thanos, how he looks. I mean, powerful with the Infinity Gauntlet. We see Spider Man with his iron suit on, Spider the uh, iron Spider Man suit. Interacting, that was fantastic. You see Captain America come out, probably wearing a Nomad outfit. I think that's a great little nod, Easter egg to the past uh, when he was Nomad for a while. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of shield he's going to have. He's going to have the uh, energy shield or just a real, real shield back. Iron Man in his new outfit saw a glimpse of Black Panther vision. Um, just looks great. Guardians of the Galaxy sitting next, standing next to Thor, standing next to Iron Man. This is going to be amazing, and they're going to need every hero they have in this. Uh, and obviously, in the trailer, if you saw the trailer, you see uh, Black Panther fighting some kind of creature or something, uh, a minion of Thanos, and uh, it looks like it's in Wakanda. And that right there leads me to believe that the Soul Gem is in Wakanda, because why would they want to attack, they might want to attack the Earth, but why attack Wakanda directly? Unless there's a soul gem there. And remember, Black Panther, read the books, has the ability to contact the souls 
of the former Black Panthers in the past. So, who knows? Maybe that's how. The Soul Gem is in that statue, and that's how he has the ability to do it and get knowledge from those other Black Panthers and wisdom. So, that's a theory of mine. I think it's correct, judging by what I've seen so far. I was holding on to that. I thought, man, it's going to be Thor Ragnarok. You know, Hela has it. She's the, uh, you know, the god of death, and she has trapped souls in her soul. But it still could, still could be there. But I think more and more it's in Black Panther. I never thought they'd have four Infinity Stones hidden on Earth. Four that were actually hidden on Earth. But they, you know, I'm like, why is Earth so special? Maybe Earth is the center of the universe, center of the galaxy. Who knows? And that's where they was hidden. But it just seems a little weird to have four of those stones there. But maybe that's where they were. So, um... Great trailer. Uh, between the three who won, I mean, I, 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 well, you didn't really see Infinity War at San Diego Comic Con, but the fact that it was released, I'll throw it in this thing. I think, um, I think it's, I gotta go with a tie. Justice League and Infinity War. Infinity War because we just wanted to see Thanos for the first time and what this looks like with all these heroes. Over the last 10 to 12 years of Marvel coming together, the whole plan coming together to this point, Infinity War. And Justice League, just because we, we got Steppenwolf, we got an idea, we got a better footage of the JLA with Josh Whedon's input uh, and the Josh Whedon effect on it. So I was, I mean, I, that, was movie, that trailer was fantastic and I can't wait. And, uh, you know, I'll be doing another video on my storylines and theories about the JLA video in more in depth because I want to go into that a little more, some of the Easter eggs and that. But I would say they those two got a tie, and Thor Ragnarok was right behind it. Now, as far as the TV uh, trailers, we saw the Flash, we saw Arrow, uh, gave us a little glimpse of it. No one knew what the storyline is, but a little glimpse of it. We saw the Gifted Fool trailer, and it's nice to see Blink and some of the people from X Men: The Days of Future Past in there. That looks pretty good. Um, you know, I always am weary when I see, uh, you know, certain TV trailer, but Fox did a good job of showing that. Uh, we saw the Inhumans trailer, and I'm going to talk about Inhumans in another video, but, um, I don't know about you guys, it just looks, it's the way ABC shoots their videos, their TVs, uh, spots, Agent of Shields is okay because it's not a lot of mystic stuff, I mean, they did a really good job on Ghost Rider, I give them that, but... And humans just look cheap to me. It just, I mean, Medusa hair, you can see, it just, it did look cheap. The whole thing looked cheap. And I'm really disappointed with that, but I'll go into that another time uh, with the video. Stay tuned for that video as I talk about the Inhumans uh, trailer. But um, I think Defenders was a real key. Defender, we got another Defenders trailer. I think it looked great uh, seeing them together, going into the storyline a little more. Uh, as the five fingers of the hand comes together and what is this demon or something where's Electra who is she how is she coming back and was she brainwashed or what but uh, I, I you know I think we saw Daredevil in his suit we're not going to see any I mean Blue Cage wear nothing but hits us you know regular suit um, I don't think we're gonna see Iron Fist wear anything but uh, his just open shirt whatever shirt he's wearing someone is Iron uh, Fist emblem of the dragon and Jessica Jones is going to wear sport her uh, you know regular t-shirt jeans and leather coat now we could be wrong because the trailer what we saw saw some fighting scenes and them down below under your underground we, for all we know we do know that Daredevil has a tailor personal tailor uh, who designed his outfit and then he had him make one for uh, Electra who knows he may at the end of Defenders when they have that big fight the climax at the end, he may have had his guy make Jessica Jones an outfit, made Iron Fist his official outfit, which I think they should do. Have him make his official outfit at the end that he wears in his next movie, next uh, next season of Netflix, and then have Luke Cage make Luke Cage outfit. Obviously, not going to be the '70s outfit, but maybe the yellow shirt with the, you know, that doesn't have bulletproof, that doesn't holes go through, and who knows? And the wristbands, who knows? They might do something like that. So. Stay tuned for that. I think Defenders got a lot more to it, but I can't wait for that series. Just dropping in about two weeks, so we don't have to wait long for that. And then we saw a little reveal of the Punisher uh, at the end, and um, I just love him wearing his Punisher outfit. So all that's coming. San Diego Comic Con did not disappoint. I I think if you watched the YouTube, I think YouTube probably got more views this week than it has in any week <laughs> prior of videos being searched and reviewed and watched. Um, but uh, I thought San Diego Comic Con did a great job. It was a fun time. Always exciting. I wish you could, you know, it's always fun that you could be there. 
Uh, but it's cool if you're home, you can get in updates and everything to watch these trailers and get excited for the movies to come. So we got a great winter coming, guys, and uh, I'm excited. I hope you are too. Remember, leave your comments below in the comments section. Uh, you can contact me in my Gmail account, readytoreactnow at gmail.com, on Facebook, Ready to React Now, and on Twitter. I'm LR Reactor. Thank you for joining me for React Reactions. I'll see you next time.